We're so close to finally seeing the highly awaited sequel to 2009's Avatar. And sure, we were having a hard time waiting, but Zoe Saldana's recent comments have left us all much more excited than we already were. Fans know that the movie will be a visual marvel on the big screens, but that's not enough for a movie, is it? So let's delve into the actress's feelings about Avatar, The Way of Water. First up, Saldana revealed how she felt after watching Avatar 2. Zoe Saldana revealed that after watching Avatar, The Way of Water's final cut, she felt very emotional. The actress co-starred as the Navi Neytiri in James Cameron's 2009 science fiction blockbuster and is slated to return in the follow-up as well. Alongside her, we will also see Sam Worthington, Sigourney Weaver, and Stephen Lang return, although Weaver and Lang won't be portraying their previous roles. So, we'll have to figure this out when we get to see the movie. During an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, South Dana announced that she had finally watched Cameron's long-awaited Avatar sequel. She received a lot of praise for her motion capture-only performance in the first installment as a tribal warrior from the planet Pandora, after which her career catapulted to new heights of popularity. So, after all this time, it's no surprise that the sequel left a major impact on her. Saldana told Jimmy that she had returned from the premiere and was surprised how her fake lashes had stayed on for the interview. We can expect the really special movie to make us sob just as it did her. The sequel has been 13 years in the making, so you must see why the actress needed time to process her feelings. Coming up, Saldana's reaction highlights a key difference from the original. After all this time, all eyes are on the sequel's potential to unseat 2009 Avatar as the top grossing movie of all time, now that it's one of the most expensive film productions in Hollywood history. The number lies somewhere between an estimated $350 million to $400 million. If it hopes to succeed, the movie needs to be more than just a spectacle to connect with viewers and reach the same heights emotionally. Even Cameron understands that The Way of Water has to end up in the top four of all-time box office successes just to break even. We're taken aback by his confidence, but he has Saldana's good luck, so the movie may surprise us. Saldana gained worldwide fame after bringing Natiri to life, which is how she she ended up with a starring role as Gamora in the MCU's Guardians of the Galaxy series. There, she traded her all-blue skin for green body paint. Not to mention that she is especially well-positioned to promote the Avatar sequel to a whole new generation. Outside of Sigourney Weaver, she is one of the most easily recognized actors on the planet. And now that we know she found the movie very emotional, she's also helped set aside another worry that viewers had with the first movie, which was was that it wasn't as emotionally impactful as they'd hoped. Following up, do we know what The Way of Water really means? With a title like Avatar, The Way of Water, perhaps fans already know some hidden meaning between the unobtainium element and the seas of Pandora. It's no exaggeration to say that the visual effects in Avatar 2 are as groundbreaking as they were in the original. The second trailer for the sequel was released, and it showed the use of groundbreaking underwater motion capture technology that made it possible for the movie to be made. This will allow viewers to be transported from the lush woods of Pandora to the planet's deep and extremely blue waters. In the trailer, the son of Jake and Natiri, Loak, says how water helped connect all things, from before one was born to after one died. This remark offered audiences another hint and pointed out the greater presence of the Navi goddess Ewa in the ocean. Then there's the unobtainium, which may serve as a link between Ewa, the Navi, and Flora and fauna of Pandora in the sequel. Moving on, unobtainium is much more important to the Navi than we think. In Avatar, humans extracting unobtainium from Pandora encroach on some of the Navi people's most sacred sites, one of which is the sacred tree where Jake and Natiri made their first public declarations of love for one another. And later, the Omatikaya's home tree becomes an obsession for Colonel Miles Quatrich because a lot of the element exists right beneath it. When the tree is brutally cut down so that the unobtainium beneath it can be safely mined, it was revealed that both locations shared
shared a strong connection with the Navi's spirit goddess Ewa. This suggests a sizable unobtainium deposit beneath the Navi soul tree, where Jake's soul was permanently transferred into his Navi body. The fact that Ewa seems more prevalent in the element-rich areas of Pandora suggests that the substance is also much more than just a mineral present in the planet's soil. Unobtainium might work as an elixir and allows the Navi to connect to Ewa through Pandora's consciousness. And that's where the way of water begins to get interesting. Coming up, the waters could be brimming with unobtainium. If you consider geology, it would tell you that unobtainium would be present in significant numbers in the waters of Pandora, even though it is only confirmed to be present in the soil of Pandora in Avatar. This is because unobtainium naturally eroded into these massive bodies of water from the land of Pandora, and because it is also possible that the soil at the bottom of the sea contains large amounts of rich mineral deposits, including unobtainium. This could have significant effects on how the precious element acts as a channel for the Navi's link to Ewa. If we're right about the unobtainium's role in the Navi's link to Ewa, the large amounts of it at the bottom of the sea would also indicate a stronger presence of their spirit goddess. In this case, you could think that being submerged in Ewa's presence was akin to a religious experience for the Navi. If it's Ewa's presence that has transformed the waters of Pandora into the ethereal aquatic realm we saw in the clips, everything from sailing to surfing would be a religious experience in the genuine meaning of the word. And with more tribes being introduced, the focus on the element's role in this sequel seems imminent. Next, could the water-dwelling Navi be closer to Ewa than anyone else? Because Ewa potentially has the strongest presence underwater, because of all the unobtainium that washed into the seas, the Navi, who lives in or close to the ocean, may have a much more unique relationship relationship with the deity. It's reasonable to assume that the Navi who inhabit Pandora may have felt Ewa more strongly than any other species on the moon. A swim in a Pandorian ocean would be close to a spiritual experience unlike any other, given how close the forest-dwelling Omatakaya are to Ewa already. And Cameron's desire to completely enchant spectators could be made possible by focusing on Ewa's presence, which so clearly has to do with all the water, and it makes sense why they would risk going to battle once again. The amount of unobtainium discovered beneath Home Tree led Quatrich and Earth's Resources Development Administration to believe they had struck gold. Still, Pandora's oceans may contain far more unobtainium than was discovered there. And if that information is true, it might even lead to a conflict for the entire planet's future, making the world's oceans an even greater target for humans digging it up. The Navi's relationship with Ewa may be irreversibly harmed if unobtainium were taken from what may be Pandora's most sacred spot, and we may have to see the Navi engage in combat to protect Pandora's oceans from humans, who may very well be their enemies. The alien race could be forced to do everything to stop humans from getting their hands on the key element. Finally, the complex layers of Ewa. There may be different levels to how close a living entity could get to Ewa, given the Navi's profound relationship with Pandora. As the Omatakaya in Avatar showed, even the land Navi had a profound connection to the spirit in their forest home. From what we can tell, the proximity of unobtainium to their holiest sites may be the key to experiencing Ewa's presence. Due to the abundance of unobtainium found in Pandora's watery depths, which may be the connecting factor between the Navi and Ewa, exploring that world would be an unparalleled metaphysical experience. But not everyone can feel it all, and the factors may have to be considered. Not to forget that we've already seen the powers the Navi possessed when they saved Weaver's character and helped Jake permanently transfer to his new body. And now, the actress will no longer appear in the same role, but as Jake and Natiri's kid, which opens up another mystery for us to explore. So, the sequel will have to answer many of our questions. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the sequel will be able to live up to the hype? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.